a land born in the depths of the ocean. Titans of rock forged by fire. Landscapes cast by colossal forces. A world of volcanoes conquered by life. An archipelago of continents in miniature. Islands colonized by unique creatures. Refuge of legendary giants and marine sanctuaries worthy of Poseidon himself. At almost 4,000 meters above sea level, the crater of Mount Teide still breathes out sulfur. The sleeping giant rose 10,000 years ago, changing the summits of Tenerife forever. They were the final blows of a brutal cataclysm which lifted the top of the island almost two kilometers sculpting a world of almost unreal beauty. A legacy of lava and ash, which stamps the whole of the Canarian archipelago with a unique character. The summits of Tenerife are so high that for most of the year they remain on the fringe of the trade winds the cool sea mists which come in from the north. Well into the autumn, they are barely a mantle of warmed up rocks, which look increasingly like a wasteland, and food is scarce. Bethelolo's pipits have learned how to adapt to the harsh conditions of this high altitude desert. They have had to sharpen their wits to find the occasional edible insect hiding in the shadows of volcanoes. The breeding of southern grey shrikes has fallen very much behind. These Audacious hunters have slowed down their activities to a minimum. Their instinct tells them that worst is to come. The skies are restless, plagued by strong winds blowing in from the southwest. At such elevated heights, they can exceed 100 kilometers per hour, sucking even more moisture from this bleak landscape. On occasions, they drag in a thick blanket of clouds laden with humidity. They are the messengers of the rains. Some years they can become quite copious, a preview of what will be a spectacular transformation. Absent from these summits for decades, a group of ravens has returned. They have had the good fortune to find a rabbit surprised by an untimely death. They operate like a caste system, where the law of the strongest prevails. But hunger drives them, and they all want to eat. Fighting is inevitable, as if it were a ritual. 
and the battle is waged where the winner is decided with a clash of robust bills. With the arrival of the snow, the harshness of this high mountain area begins to show its true colors. These landscapes of lava turn into a cold desert which challenges life itself. Which is somewhat surprising for islands forged by fire and risen from subtropical waters. Most birds seek refuge far from these snow-covered summits. Only a few can withstand such hostile conditions. From top to bottom, the islands are huge volcanic edifices. Even the roots, which penetrate deep into the ocean, share the same origin. And they rose in the path of the powerful Gulf Stream, a marine highway which connects both sides of the Atlantic. This current is the reason for the appearance of solitary nomads, as surprising as the Eden's whale in the middle of its journey to its breeding grounds. The loggerhead sea turtles opened their eyes for the first time on the beaches of the American continent and on the Cape Verde Islands. Their instinct draws them to Canarian waters where they will spend several years until they reach breeding age. Then they will cross the ocean again until they find the very same beaches where they were born. On the leeward side of Tenerife and La Gomera, in the shelter of quieter waters, marine mammals such as short-finned pilot whales have established one of the few permanent colonies in the world. Family groups form, united by strong social relationships and led by an experienced female. Their presence has much to do with the almost abyssal depths which exist between nearby islands. They are the private hunting grounds which allow the whales to locate and catch the legendary giant squid, their favorite prey. And for this, they have to descend almost a kilometer. From the eternal blackness of the marine abysses, the small-toothed sand tiger shark arrives, almost four meters in length, and about whose behavior little is known. Its purpose is to find a safe haven in quiet surface waters where its young can be born, far from attack by the numerous predators who dwell in deeper waters. It favors the coasts of El Hierro, an island so young that it is still growing. In 2011, a new submarine volcano rose to within meters of the surface. Hardly an instant in geological terms, but which profoundly altered the local marine environment. A toxic soup spread to the shore, leaving a horrific trail in its wake. From the nearby vantage point afforded by an old juniper trunk, the osprey is witness to this unique event. It's the first time he's seen it, and probably the last. and it's caught the pair at the height of the breeding season. 
To feed their well-grown chick, they must go further afield to other fishing grounds unaffected by the eruption. But it won't be long before the male is back because these waters teem with fish. Fortunately, this pair have no competitors and will not find it difficult to raise their single chick. Ospreys are well adapted to life where the volcanoes meet the sea, withstanding the effects of the salt water day after day. They need small doses of fresh water and will not hesitate to leave their territory to fly kilometers inland in search of this precious resource. On islands where fresh water is scarce, these small oases are meeting places where several ospreys can be found. A refreshing bath is always welcome and at the same time serves to keep their plumage in perfect condition. It's a quiet spot to enjoy a well-deserved rest and dry off in the breeze and the sun. On the southern coast of El Hierro, the spring rains are scant and arrive very feebly. But they afford a truce to all the creatures who live in the shadows of these volcanoes. It's a good moment for the osprey, as it can preen without needing to leave its territory. The force of the sea has battered the north coast, leaving little rocky islands offshore. The Roku Salmor evokes legends. Legends of a race of giant lizards believed to be extinct and who have now returned to what was once their home. More than a hundred of these giant reptiles inhabit this sharp and arid needle of basalt where everything is scarce. The rainwater is a gift from the skies. Very little usually falls and it evaporates quickly. It's a moment they must all make the most of as it might not rain again until well into the winter. Sharing what little there is with the yellow-legged gulls has its advantages. The almost intact grasshoppers cast aside by these birds are a source of protein essential to the survival of these scaly giants. Something has changed in the high mountain area of Tenerife. What was a cold, snowy desert has been completely transformed. The long arm of a wet winter. And a late spring settling in the summits transformed the ash and lava landscapes. 
This is a wonderland of plants capable of withstanding the rigors of an extreme arid and hostile climate. A carpet of different shapes and colors which grows nowhere else on Earth. Only here in the shadows of this world sculpted by volcanoes. Invertebrate fauna exceed a thousand species and many share the privilege of being endemic to the Canarian high mountain area. Some plants, such as the red burglos, need more than just one spring to display their full splendor. The weight is always worth it. They are a mass of flowers, each one containing nectar, an irresistible attraction for canaries. These small birds sometimes cover great distances to get here, which means expending a great deal of energy. But the reward far outweighs the effort. The Tenerife lizards here are slightly different from those who inhabit the rest of the island. They are at the height of the breeding season and the males are displaying their conspicuous blue markings. They have become extremely active and climb even the tallest flowers with amazing agility. They are not only looking for the nectar of this unique plant, but also feed on its flowers. Southern grey shrikes obtain their energy from other life forms. They are clever and skillful hunters. The pair have to work hard. Their fledgling chicks never stop begging for food. Right now, the lizards are their main prey. Some are too large and will need to be cut into pieces. These reptiles are abundant at this time of year and the young shrikes will grow rapidly. The fascinating Barbary falcons have arrived in the summits and settled on almost vertical rock faces. This pair have been lining their rough nest with a somewhat unusual material. The feathers of the birds that they need daily to rear their young. Beneath its territory, hidden by layers of lava, one of the strangest ecosystems in the Canary Islands pulsates volcanic cavities. Where silence and darkness reign, and of such extreme precariousness that only the most well-adapted creatures can possibly survive. Profound evolutionary changes have been necessary. It hasn't sufficed just to lose their pigment or even their eyes. They don't need them here. This spider of the genus Disdera doesn't fashion silken webs. It prefers to patrol this lava labyrinth until it happens upon prey. Their metabolism has had to slow to a bare minimum in order to cope with almost absolute privation. As if it were a spider, the larva of the Trichocera mosquito repairs its web and moves along the slender thread it has woven until it reaches a tiny fly which has become entrapped. The canary long-eared bats reach this point. They are an endemic species which use these volcanic tubes to rest during the day. 
Now they are leaving them to begin a new hunting session under cover of night. The chicks of the long-eared owl are hungry now. After a long day without food, they can sense that their luck is about to change. At only a few days old, they are already able to regulate their body temperature. They remain alone in the nest while their parents don't have a moment's break with three mouths to feed. The night will also be long. They will have to keep hunting until dawn. Under the sea shines a firmament with its own stars. Like a ghostly shadow, the spiny butterfly ray glides, cutting through clouds of small fish. It's seeking out the sandy bottom to repeat the hunting strategy that has always brought it good results, to cover itself with a second skin. A camouflage which is difficult to top. This monotonous garden of banded tube and enemies only appears at night. They're waiting to capture plankton and other small creatures which the marine currents sweep along. The angel shark has copied the same strategy as the rays. To verify its efficiency is only a question of time. Twenty thousand years ago, the sea level rose almost a hundred meters, flooding empty lava tubes. The ebb of the tides has left a trail of salty pools disconnected from the sea. A new ecosystem colonized by a few species capable of paving the way in the darkness. The blind albino crab is the most striking, a small crab, pale and blind, only found in the Canary Islands. Timan fire was a wound in the heart of Lanzarote, which for seven years destroyed everything it found in its path. Thus, a pristine and barren landscape was reborn on its ashes. But it also brought with it a second youth, a new opportunity where evolution repeats the amazing cycle of colonizing lava flows. For thousands of years, the swell has crushed the shells of countless marine animals, forming these soft golden beaches. The prevailing winds carry these fine particles of sand kilometers inland, eventually covering the surface of solid volcanic rock. This is how these sand plains were formed, 
Enormous areas which, as they get further away from the coast, are colonized by different plant communities. The unusual capacity for this land to retain humidity delays the onset of premature wilting caused by the constant winds and strong sunshine. But even here, there comes a time when the greenery is defeated. At last, black clouds fill the sky. It is only to be hoped that the rains won't be late. When they arrive, they do so with force. It's the signal that has been waited for. The male Lubana bastard has no time to lose. Possessed by a passing madness, he begins his spectacular courtship. Little water falls here, but some years the rains are copious and persistent. They are the rare years with winters which persist into the spring. Even plants with the deepest roots bloom now. The sand plain shows its true splendor. It's the opportunity that the small inhabitants of these expanses of sand have been waiting for. The male Ubara hasn't given up on his efforts to attract the attention of the females, but the presence of the ravens prompts the exercise of caution. He has grown up on these plains. He knows from experience that the ravens will trawl every inch of the sand plain in their search for food. Incubation is coming to an end for the first clutches of eggs, and they are very vulnerable. With the danger over, the veteran male resumes his mad runs. The cream-colored cursor hides his clutch where the color of the sand makes it almost invisible. And he himself also needs to go unnoticed. The stone curlews are in no hurry when the moment comes to take their turn at incubating. It's their particular strategy to avoid enemies. Separated from Lanzarote by a narrow stretch of sea, Fuerteventura has barely recovered from recent volcanic eruptions. It's an ancient island of captivating beauty, an immense plain ravaged by lack of moisture and almost permanent winds. Its eroded slopes disappear beneath the Hamatan, a blanket of fine dust carried by the fickle winds which blow from the Sahara Desert. Here the winters are almost unpredictable and the rains uncertain and longed for. A prize for this parched, dusty land. A breath of fresh air for life and also for the relentless erosion which condemns it to be a desert. 
The little soil that remains is slowly lost as it is washed towards the sea. It's the inescapable end that awaits all the islands, to disappear beneath the waves as if they had never existed. The coming of the rains awakens the gilded dragon of these plains, the cylindrical skink, a reptile about which little is known and more closely related to North African species than to other Canarian skinks. This elusive hunter has spent months without a drink and doesn't waste this opportunity. The rain has strewn the island with little oases, much appreciated in these wildernesses, but short-lived. Those who dwell in this desolating landscape know how valuable the water is and gather at these dwindling pools. There might not be another chance until next winter. In the Canary Islands, sand grouse live only in Fuerteventura. Their strict diet of grains and seeds obliges them to drink daily. They will fly dozens of kilometers to savor the quality of this water before it evaporates completely. But here it never disappears totally because it continues to flow freely throughout the year in a few ravines. On its journey from the volcanic heart of the island, the water has become laden with mineral salts, a minor problem when there is no other available source for kilometers around. Perhaps this is the reason why Fuerteventura has always had large herds of free-ranging goats. Thousands of them have overgrazed its delicate plant cover for centuries, leaving the ground vulnerable to erosion. But on these deserted plains, even the worst nightmare has a bright side. The tragic end which awaits these semi-wild goats is a windfall for other wildlife. News travels fast and with a few hours, the lonely spot where a newborn goat has collapsed becomes a very busy place. The instinct to survive prevails and they all want to be the first to eat. Clashes worsen. For the Egyptian vulture, times have changed. Never before has there been so much competition on these plains. The buzzards, predators by nature, have learned that carrion can be an alternative. For now, these true vultures will have to wait their turn and resign themselves to what little may be left. With the crowd that has been gathering, it doesn't look as if all of them will get to eat. There's wind of further tension in the air. An unexpected guest is watching, and it would be wise to leave. Feral cats are predators feared by all. They are comparatively recent intruders on the archipelago and have successfully adapted to this ecosystem. Night is their greatest ally, but hunger obliges this adult male to move in broad daylight. It knows that it's vulnerable right now and moves with stealth. ever watchful for the slightest sign of danger. With its stomach full, it will go away to rest for the remainder of the day.
The deserted expanses of Fuerteventura are a second homeland for Barbary land squirrels. Native to Northeast Africa, in only a few decades they have invaded the whole island. This achievement is due in part to the ease with which they breed and the polished skill with which they can find something to eat in a tangle of dried out prickles. And with few known enemies apart from the buzzards, who have also learned to thrive in such a hostile environment. It has built its nest out in the open, in a ravine carved out by erosion. A solitary chick is the only survivor from a clutch of three eggs. The heat is oppressive, and these birds need to keep their beaks open in order to maintain their body temperature. With no protection from the sun, a little shade is much more important right now than food. Its mother is well aware of this, so hunting can wait for a while. The breeze brings unexpected clouds which cool the air. It will fly from the nest in search of food, leaving the chick unaccompanied. The squirrels sense the danger. The male has brought it another catch. This time it's only been a short wait. The young buzzard is already impatient. It hasn't eaten since dawn. The female will begin feeding it very gently with small pieces of meat, finishing with a leg which has very little meat on it. It will soon be necessary to feed it again. At 15 million years old, Tenerife is at the height of its maturity. Its lovers are hidden beneath forests of Canary Island pine, one of the few conifers in the world capable of surviving fire. A brilliant adaption enabling it to thrive in the shadows of volcanoes. Although these pine forests are very old, the first great spotted woodpeckers arrived barely 150,000 years ago. They are almost identical to those which inhabit the extensive Central European forests, from where they arrived fleeing the last Great Ice Age. One of the few birds exclusive to the archipelago lives in the Canarian pine forests, the blue chaffinch. Its origin is still a mystery. There is nothing similar to these striking forest dwellers anywhere else in the world. Here it finds everything it needs to survive, but it has to hide its nest in a safe place away from its worst enemy, the sparrowhawk. A hunter built to maneuver with ease in the densest vegetation and a specialist in catching birds. The sparrowhawk can thrive only in the richest forests. In these, they are able to satisfy the constant demands of a large family. Mm -hmm. 
The trade winds exercise a powerful influence on these islands and also on the sea. In summer, their power increases greatly, speeding up the superficial layer of the sea, thus facilitating the rise of colder, deeper waters rich in organic matter. On the lee side, parts of the seabed stir, freeing nutrients and chlorophyll. They are offshore oases which set in motion the complex interactions between hunter and hunted. The currents also churn up swarms of jellyfish towards the shore, and many end up dying. Life can be very short here. These waters attract many species of marine mammals, some of whom are very swift and well organized. Atlantic spotted dolphins live exclusively in the ocean waters of the Macronesian archipelagos. With their constant onslaughts, they corral huge shoals of fish. They drive the fish, petrified with fear, towards the surface. There, they are pitilessly bombarded by Cory's she-waters, who are like arrows raining down from the sky. There's no possible means of escape. La Gomera shares the same volcanic origins as the other Canary Islands, but that has been left far back in time. With hardly any recent eruptions, it has matured, covered in legendary forests, although in places the bedrock of its violent past can still be seen. Its summits are swept for most of the year by thick clouds laden with humidity, carried along by the trade winds. This is the secret of the Laurel Forest, a subtropical forest on the roof of a volcanic island. It's a survivor from the tertiary period, when it covered a great part of the Mediterranean basin, and from where it then disappeared due to profound climatic changes a relic of the past which has endured here, save from glaciers and deserts, thanks to the protection of an exceptional climate. Trees which have hardly evolved in millions of years, as if time had stood still. The leaves and trunks of this mysterious forest work like a huge distillation plant, trapping the tiny particles of water held in the mist. The miracle of a rainy forest on the edge of the desert. This is the preferred habitat of the woodcock. Barely a few years old, its chicks move nervously. Even with plumage that blends in with the fallen leaves, they are not totally safe from their predators. The gold crests must be very careful. Right now they are very active and this could give them away. This cloudy rainforest has a surprisingly rich biodiversity. Bolly's pigeon is no ordinary pigeon. It's a unique species in the world. They are descendants of migratory birds which arrived from continental Europe in the distant past. Here they discovered lush, evergreen vegetation. A safe refuge which they never left and where they followed their own evolutionary path. This unique forest consists of 20 or so different species of trees which provide them with food throughout the year, although it isn't always easy to find. 
Weighing almost half a kilo, the robust Bolles pigeon displays surprising agility. It has discovered a vignatico abounding with fruit, and it wastes no time in climbing even the thinnest branches. At the end of September, the Canary Madrones will attract the interest of many birds. While the fruits remain on the trees, few birds can take advantage of them. To remove their hard skin requires skill and strength. On ripening, they fall to the ground and even dainty robins can enjoy their exquisite flesh. The shy white-tailed laurel pigeon has discovered them and wastes no time. These endemic birds come from a different and much older lineage than Bolis laurel pigeon. Its narrow beak doesn't stop it from swallowing the fruits whole. Unlike many other plants of the laurel forest, the Canary Island bellflower adjusts its flowering to the onset of winter. Its nectar is the best guarantee of attracting chiffchaffs. They need an accomplice who will take their pollen to other flowers. Despite not being true pollinators, these small birds have learned the same technique used by hummingbirds. Mice arrived in these forests along with human activity. Some of them have found an alternative source of energy in these remarkable flowers. But for now, perhaps, they are just thieves. Something similar happens with the canary foxglove. Its flowers are shaped for pollination by birds, an obstacle it has overcome in a similar way. by creating a pollinating bird in an archipelago where perhaps none existed before. These volcanic islands are laboratories in constant evolution. In the north of Lanzarote, the Eleonora's falcons are restless. Autumn is coming. They arrived here a few months earlier at the beginning of spring, with the sole intention of mating and raising their chicks. They achieved this by crossing the forests and deserts of the African continent. completing an epic journey of almost 9,000 kilometers from their wintering grounds on the distant island of Madagascar. The first rains arrive. For the young falcons who are born at the height of summer, it's the first time they have felt raindrops on their plumage. Perhaps this is the signal that it's time for them to leave. What drives them to repeat their extraordinary journey in the opposite direction, an incredible feat, is a mystery etched in some corner of their minds. It will only be a temporary absence They will return next spring, bewitched by this burned and thirsty land, which witnessed their birth. To this tiny corner of an archipelago, which rose from the depths of the ocean. 
titans of rock and fire, sculpted by winds and waves on an almost infinite ocean. The Canary Islands have been conquered by extraordinary creatures who have made their home in the shadows of volcanoes. <laughs>